So the coastal plan is about developing with the community uh, a vision um, for this coastline, for how we might better manage it, and about sitting down with the community and thinking about what are the different steps and longer term actions that we can take to help us get there. So the challenge at large is that through time, as people have developed towards the coast, it's really meant that the beach is now sort of squeezed in such a narrow space, so it's really hard in the current state to retain sand on that beach long term. So part of why we're so keen to work with Mana Whenua on, on this is that they sort of instinctively bring that generational way of thinking to this, which is really important because it's all about setting up future generations to use this beach and um, make sure that this beach is going to be something and this coast is going to be something that people find value in. Well, I think collectively for Mana Whenua, um, our vision is that um, we restore some of those I guess what we call natural habitat, so the bush, the sand dunes. We plant some trees, we get some new bush happening along that coastline. We're not going to really actually see that probably in our generation, but our children's children, they will see it. And that's what it's about, and it's about looking after it for future generations. Probably the most exciting thing about this project is an opportunity to be quite proactive and aspirational because when we start moving away from this sort of reactive space, we give ourselves an opportunity to think about different options that are only available when you're being forward-looking. But when you're being reactive, you have to respond um, with your short-term interests in mind. But when we're being proactive, we have chances to look at a broader range of opportunities that might be more sustainable long-term. community and the council working together have a great opportunity to really envisage what they want this to look like for the next couple of generations. So we're talking about a significant body of work here which really does set the stage for how we want to make this coast look. Kind of one of the jewels of Dunedin, you know, our, this is a city beach where we have incredible surf uh, but we also have incredibly beautiful possibilities and connections to nature 10 minutes from the centre of town. So it's something I, I think that we, we all care for in, in SCAG group, but I think many of the people around Dunedin, many of the taxpayers, really care about our city beaches. The recreation, the ability to walk and meet and be in nature is utterly important for mental health and physical health. So I can't emphasise it strongly enough. This is a really important asset to us in South Dunedin, but also the city widely. We need to look at ways where we're able to manage Whakahekido as a surf break because it has a lot of history in, in amongst Dunedin people. This is a whole city-wide question we have. There are people who live locally, there are people who live at a distance, but we all use these beaches. You really need to come to this consultation and get involved because this will set up the beach for a very, very long time. And if you don't turn up to the consultation, you can't really say that your voice wasn't heard. The St Clair to St Kilda coastal plan provides lots of opportunities for ways that might improve this beach in the long term, so perhaps some of our options in the future could encourage wildlife to come here, perhaps we could look at ways to better manage the, the sand on the beach or look to plantings, more sort of natural or sustainable actions in the future. The St Clair to St Kilda coastal plan will involve a, a series of actions or steps, uh, likely options that can be used to manage the coast through the short, medium and long term. Um, but it's also about the strategic context or vision that we can set with the community um, because that's really important because it gives us context to make our management decisions within. What that would mean in winter is if we have a big storm that comes through and rips up the beach that we have that vision um, that will help guide us in our actions. So as a result, our actions or response to that event can be something that the community's bought into, they understand, and ultimately it moves us towards where we want to be in the long term. All sorts of different people are going to have different ideas for what this coast should look like in the future and different ideas of what options might work, but what we're really keen to do is expose our staff and our process to all those different sorts of ideas because no one idea is necessarily better or worse than the others and we're really keen to um, hear the full range. Community engagement and consultation, we can all be pretty cynical about it, but if we don't actually have our say in it, then nothing will change and in fact this place will get worse. But it's really important for everybody to have their say about what they would like to see developed along here and what they want to see have happen. So when it comes to the consultation, what I would really say to everybody is don't hold back on your vision. Um, we need people to come with sort of the 
their greatest aspirations because what we want to do here is come out with the best outcomes and only by having all those views will we get that.